Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are looking at factoring polynomials. Specifically, we are factoring monomial factors out of trinomials. So we're going to start with something that looks like this and get something that looks like this. So if you're looking for factoring trinomials into two sets of binomials, this is not that lesson, but we do have a different one on that. Um, but we're just factoring the greatest common factor out of a set of one trinomial. So what you need to do, need to know how to do is prime factorization of terms. You also, it's good to know how to find the greatest common factor inside of a polynomial. And the distributive property is a good thing to know with this as well. Let's go ahead and factor. If you're given a trinomial, which is any expression like this with three terms, trinomial, and those three terms are separated by addition or subtraction symbols, doesn't really matter which, you can go ahead and factor them out by using this method. First, you list each term as a product of its prime factors. So 24, a to the power of 3, would be 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times a to the power of 3. And then 12a squared is 3 times 2 times 2 times a squared. And 16a, our final term, is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times a. This is where the skills of prime factorization come into play. And you'll see that in each example that we, we show today. Now, the next step is to factor out everything that is common between these three terms. So just like factoring binomials, where we looked for common factors, items that were common, we're going to do the same thing. It just has to be common in every single term. So 2, 2, and 2, that's a factor that's common. 2, 2, and 2. So there are two 2's in each of these. And there's also at least one a in each term. Notice we had a to the power of 3. We reduced that down to a to the power of 2. We had a to the power of 2. We reduced that down to a to just the power of 1. And then when we have just a single a there, we cancel that out completely. So now you look at what we've taken from each term. 4a is common to all terms. That is our greatest common factor. All right, that's the greatest common factor for this trinomial. So that's why we factor out the greatest common factor. Again, it's just the prime factors that are common to every single term. So we'll factor out a. 4a, and then fill in what's left. To do that, we look at our first term, 24a to the power of 3. Look, we have 3 times 2 times a squared. That will give us 6a squared. In our second term, we started with 12a squared. Now we're left with 3 times a to the power of 1, 3a. And in our third term, it started out as 16a. We factored out 4a. We're left with 2 times 2 which is 4. And that's how you factor out a greatest common factor from a trinomial. We're going to factor one more here. 15x to the power of 3 plus 12x squared plus 9x. Follow exactly the same steps. We list the prime factors of each term. We're going to factor out everything that is common between them. So we look at these terms and we say, what is common? Well, this one has a 3 and a 5 and an x to the power of 3. This one has a 2, a 2, and a 3 and an x to the power of 2. And then this one has two 3s and an x. So let's go ahead and take a look. The only thing in common there, the only number in common is 3. And then we can factor out 1x from each term. So we would end up with then as our greatest common factor, 3x. And then, again, we fill in what's left. What's left of 15x to the power of 3 when we, take, when we divide by 3x? Well, we have 5, and then we have x to the power of 2. 5x to the power of 2. 12x squared divided by this 3x leaves us with 4x. And then 9x, when we take out 3x, we'll be left with 3. And that's how we're finished. If you want to check this work, you can check it at any time using the distributive property. And we've talked about this with binomials. It's the same thing with trinomials. 
you would reverse and use the distributive property to multiply. 3x times 5x squared gives us 15x to the power of 3. 3x times 4x gives us 12x squared. And then 3x times 3 will give us 9x. You know you've done it correctly if your term at the end or your trinomial at the end is exactly the same as what you started with. I want to go over a couple of special cases. And these are cases that um, will sometimes stump you a little bit or sometimes maybe slow you down. I just want to make sure that we all have um, an awareness of these. In this case, I have 12x squared plus 5x plus 3. <clears throat> the first term and the second term have x in common. The first term and the final term have 3 in common. These two terms have nothing in common, but there is nothing common to every single term. If that's the case and you get one like this, the trinomial has no common factors, therefore it is already in, you, you basically can't factor it out. Now there are other ways to factor a trinomial. Oftentimes you'll see a trinomial factored into two binomials, and that's in a different lesson. For Taking out common factors, this is done. You can't take out any more common factors from these three terms. The other special case, and this one you will see quite often, is when you have something like this, 17x to the power of 3 plus 23x squared plus 5x. There are no common factors between 17 and 23 or 17 and 5 or 23 and 5 or 5 and 17. There's no common factors. But there is an x in common. So sometimes you will have variables in common while you do not have any actual numbers, no coefficients. If that's the case, factor out the x just like you would um, any other factor. And basically you reduce the x value down in each one. This is x to the power of 3. It would become x to the power of 2. x squared becomes x. And this final x is becomes 1. 5 times 1 leaves you with 5. So those are the special cases you may see if you have only a variable or if a trinomial has no common factors. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. Be sure to subscribe for more math lessons. You can check out the playlist. They're organized according to class. This, for example, is an Algebra 1 class. So there's other Algebra 1 lessons all listed in a logical order. Or you can just search my channel for specific lessons that you're struggling with. And I've also put together a playlist for some random silly how-to videos. So if you're interested in looking up something just a little bit more silly, go ahead and check those out. Enjoy and have a wonderful day.